Entropy, which is given the symbol capital S, is a measure of a system's randomness and disorder. Let's start with just a refresher of system. Remember that the system is just the object that we are studying or focusing on. So for this ice cube, this could be the system if we were focusing on it, or this puddle of water, this could be a system as well. Each of these systems have, within the molecules, they have some degree of randomness or disorder. For the ice cube, where the water molecules should be arranged in a very orderly fashion, we can imagine that there might be some sort of disruption in the pattern in which the ice cubes are arranged, and that would contribute to randomness and disorder. So this ice cube has some value of entropy. I personally don't know what it is. We could look it up if we really wanted to know. It's not important to this video. There is some entropy in this ice cube. Likewise, in our puddle of water, we have a bunch of water molecules in here as well, and they also have randomness and disorder to them. In fact, they have quite a bit. In the ice cube, the water molecules mostly are gonna be arranged nice and orderly, whereas in the water molecule, or in the, in the liquid water, they are free to just kind of hang out and do their own thing. So there's a lot of randomness in the, the molecules in this liquid some amount of entropy over here. Again, I don't know off the top of my head what it is, but we could look it up if we really wanted to know. For any system, for all systems, the value of entropy is always greater than zero. So this means that all systems, no matter what they are, they all have some degree of randomness or disorder. There is no system that has entropy equal to zero. It is not possible. Everything has an element of randomness or disorder to it. Entropy can also be applied to chemical processes. It doesn't only have to be applied to a system. So this in the middle here, I'm showing this ice cube melting. This we could think of as a chemical reaction solid H2O being converted to liquid H2O. Because this is a process, this is a situation where entropy is changing. So for this process or this chemical reaction, we would have not an entropy, but a change in entropy because there is some sort of change to the randomness or disorder of the molecules as this ice cube is melting and becoming liquid water. We can calculate the change in entropy for any sort of process or reaction by taking the entropy of the products, the final entropy, and subtracting the entropy of the reactants, the initial. So this could also be written as delta S is equal to the entropy final minus the entropy initial. So if we know, I can't spell initial. If we know the value of the entropy of our products, and we also know the value of the entropy of our reactants, we could very easily calculate the change in entropy for some sort of process. Now for a process, the change in entropy is not restricted the way that the value of entropy is for a system. So for a process or reaction, the change in entropy could be greater than zero, it could be less than zero, or it could even be equal to zero, depending on exactly what's going on. If the change in entropy is equal to zero for a process, this just simply means that there is no change to the randomness or the disorder of the system uh, as it undergoes that particular change. If the change in entropy is greater than zero, this means that the system becomes or became more random. It increased in randomness. And then if the change in entropy was less than zero, this would mean that the system became less random. It somehow became more ordered. For a process like this, solid, melting, becoming a liquid, this is an example of a process where we are increasing in entropy. So for this particular process, the value of delta S is greater than zero, entropy increases,
And this is always going to be the case when we move from a very ordered state into a more disordered state, like going from a solid to a liquid, or if we were going from a liquid to a gas.